So we have our quiz example from last time, which, uh, or a couple times ago, which only has one question on it, uh, one addition question. And again, I modified this a little bit. Um, the challenge that, that what was given to you was to look at this and see how you could change it to use, um, to, to make it easy to add questions to it. Um, we made some simplifying assumptions that they could be the same questions every time. In other words, right now we have the same question every time, right? One plus one. But, you know, there just would be, a, uh, you know, it would always show the same questions each time, but there would be more of them. And the challenge was, is to do it in the most efficient way, efficiency being defined as how efficient it would be to change this to add a question. So we want to make our job easiest to add a question. We want to make as little effort possible to add a question to the quiz. So we add, so we make a change to something, should take care of adding the question to the display, um, as well as grading the question. All right. We, uh, the other simplifying assumption that we made is we said uh, we can assume that every um, question was an addition question. All right. Every question was an addition question. Uh, I heard some good thoughts and some discussion. There was a, a group of people uh, talking about it, and other folks, I think, were mulling it over on their own. What ideas do you have for this? Yes? An array of questions and an array of answers. All right. That could work. Could we do something else? Yes. Well, on the form, you could have it, you know, with uh, three input boxes, you know, for the, for the question, you know, the two, uh -huh. you know, like two plus two, right. you know, four, you know, input that, and then have the form on the other side code that into the form with the answer. That way it would come up as the question the next time around. Oh. No, no, no. Again, I, I talked about no, you know, it's not like a content management system. We don't have to be able to enter questions in. I like the ideas of arrays, though. All right. So we're going to use some arrays. And what you suggested is a great suggestion. But there's another way we could do it as well. All right. Especially given I cheated and I said that you could have, uh, you could assume that there's only addition questions. If you assume that there are only addition questions, what could we store instead of storing the question and the answer in an array? The two numbers that we're adding together, right? We could, uh, in, in other words, what you're saying is have an array where the first element of the question array would be 1 plus 1. And the first element of the answer array would be 2. And then the next one would be that. That's still too much work because I have to do the calculation, all right? And I could do it inconsistently, especially if I'm making a bunch of changes. And I could accidentally put in 6 plus 5 and say the answer is 10. All right? If, however, I create arrays to store the two um, add-ins, is that what they're called? The two things that we're adding together, then I can display the question. And I can go in and grade it. Because if I know, you know, if I have an array or a set of arrays and one array is A, another array is B, then I can calculate the answer. The answer to question one is what? Zero plus five is five. Answer to question two, one plus six is seven. And so on down the line. Actually, to, as long as we're talking about simply two operations, or, or, or I'm sorry, two operands and one operation, we could add a third array in there to say the operation, as long as it was a plus, minus, multiply, or divide. And then we could through if statements. I just thought I'd simplify things and say only add. It really wouldn't be that much harder to add the operation. So we know the secret is to put arrays. All right. What will that do for us? Now that we have arrays, what can we do? Array 
Okay, we could reference them, and so how, we, how are we going to use them? But, but to do what on our page? Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use our array to create the empty form. Right? We're going to use our array to display this the first time it's entered. In other words, right now I have hard coded one input, right? That hard coding is going to change. It's going to be as part of a loop. And the loop is going to go through as many times as there's members in the array, all right? And it will display the question each iteration through the loop. Now, um, that's what we're going to do on the display the form side. Let's start with that. All right. Then we'll look at how we can do it on the grading side. All right. We actually have a couple options. You know, there's always a couple of options, right? So we'll play around and we'll see what we can do. All right. First of all, we have to remember how to do PHP arrays. And because I'm an old pro at this, I'm going to pretend like I know and use this to reinforce the need to be able to look things up quickly on the internet and finding good and reliable sites. And php.net, that's probably a pretty reliable site. All right. Ah, here's how we can create a simple array. Dollar sign array equals array and then a list of items. So, let's go in and let's create an array and just for simplicity, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll call it add end one and add end two. Now, all right, what does, the, what does the phrase variable scope mean? What does it mean when we talk about the scope of a variable? Where it can be used. Where it can be used, all right. Where, it can see, what, what, where that variable can be seen, where that variable can be accessed. In general terms, there are, and just to simplify things, variables are typically global variables or local variables. All right, that's a little bit, you know, there's other types too, but we'll simplify things. A global variable is one that's declared on a page level. And I'm not just talking about PHP now. PHP is kind of the oddball of global variables. All right. But a global variable in JavaScript, let's say, is one that's declared on the page level. What do I mean when I say on the page level? I mean not within a function. All right? So a variable that's declared in a function is what's called a local variable, which means that it only has scope inside that function. All right? So if this were JavaScript, let's go in and, and just put in the, the, the shell of a JavaScript. If I have a script like this,
I don't know, just something goofy. All right. If I had a JavaScript like this, that var x is a declaration of the variable x outside of the function, outside of any function. Therefore, x could be used in either of these two functions. All right? Because x is, in a sense, a page level or, for our purposes, a global variable. All right? Because it's defined outside of a function. It's declared outside of a function. Now, y and q are local variables. All right? They are defined inside these functions, which means that this function can't access y, and this function can't access q, because those are local variables. They're declared within a function, so they only have scope within this function. This is the way JavaScript works. This is the way nearly every programming language in the world works. VB, C, C Sharp, Java, the list is almost endless. All right? Because I'm spending a lot of time talking about this, guess what the exception must be? PHP. How is PHP different? Well, go ahead. Uh, inside of the functions there, they can't use the, the global variables. Uh, more or less, the statement was, is inside the function, they can't use global variables. But there's an un no, even without an argument, you can use them, but there's an unless on there. There's always a catch, right? The unless. The reason that PHP is problematic is there's no de mechanism to declare a variable in PHP, right? There's no, for those of you that are VB folk, there's no dim statement. There's no declaration like there is in Java or JavaScript or C Sharp or any other language. How do you make a variable in, in PHP? You start using it. All right? So, in PHP, there's no way of knowing if I start using that variable add end here, it's going to think that that's a local variable that I'm creating inside that function unless I declare that variable as a global. All right? And, pardon me? Oh. <laughs> and how do I declare it as a global? Say global. But you declare it inside the function. How do I global an array? And then the name of the variable name, right. And then you need to put that in the beginning of the function. So, what I have to do is say global add in one and I think I can do it on the same line add in two So what that does is these variables now, this function can see the page level variable for add end and add end to. Again, that's the opposite of every programming language that is used. All right? In most programming languages, you declare the variables local. All right? And if you declare them outside of the page, they're considered to be global. And they'll be global unless you explicitly declare a variable as local, all right, within a function. Here's the other way around. Every variable you use is assumed to be local unless you use the global in that function. So 
if I have three functions that I want to share that uh, uh, variable in, I have to declare it as global in all three of those functions. Now, you did mention about passing it as an argument. That would be another alternative, too, is passing it as an argument. Probably another um, alternative would be to put it in an include file. And then I could put the include file in there twice. Um, so there's alternatives to do that. Uh, it seemed like a good time to talk about global variables, so that's the one we're going to use. Okay, so we have our array of, uh, of numbers here. We made it global in the display form function. Now we can use it. All right, and this is where it's good to have hard coded one. A lot of times in server side scripting, in fact, when I worked at a software uh, company that did websites, what we'd do is we'd have the graphics designers come up with the look and the feel of the page, but because they didn't know scripting, they would just like hard code stuff in. So if we were generating something from a, a script, they'd put in some dummy data just so that we could see how it was laid out. Then we'd go and would kind of gut out their code, their hard coded stuff, and replace it with our magical scripts to do what we wanted it to do. And that's sort of what we're doing here. In other words, what do I want to be different here? Well, I still want the form tag. The difference is, is this. I don't want to be 1 plus 1. I want to um, go into uh, the server-side uh, script mode, the PHP mode, and um, output the two elements from the array with a plus sign in between them. All right. I also want included in here a input, a text box to input the answer. And finally, I'm going to want a span to place errors when we get around to writing server-side validation for this. Okay. So, what we're going to do then is get into PHP mode and put a loop in here for dollar sign i equals zero I is less than what? How many times do we do this loop? Yeah. In this particular case, five, but the real answer is the length of the array. All right. So we could put a five in there, but if we added a question, that's the second thing that we are, we're going to have to remember to go and change. So let's go and pretend we don't remember how to do this and look up the length of an array in PHP. That would I'm sure that would cause some trouble if I googled Google. <laughs> I think the, the internet would explode. PHP array length and if we scroll on down down here or it is count so count counts all the elements in the array all right <clears throat> Excuse me. So, I'm actually glad I Googled that. I thought it was that length. But if I is less than count my array, and each time through my loop, I'm going to increment i by 1. Which again, what's that going to do for us? That is going to give us first time through the loop, 
i is going to have a value of 0, we print out the zeroth element, the first element in the array. All the way through, the last time through the loop, i is going to have a value of 4, we print the last element, and then we drop out of the loop. So, I have to go over here and put my closing bracket for the loop. All right. And this is a body of code that's going to get repeated every time. Now, I'm not there yet, but you know what? I'm going to test this. Because what I should see is I should see 5, 1 plus 1 equals in a text box. All right? So that's not what we want, but I'm going to test this now just to make sure that I haven't made any dumb errors. That way, when I go to the next phase, all right, if something goes wrong, I know it's in the lines that I've most recently changed. Again, the, the whole idea of just doing a little, little piece of it at a time. So let's bring this up. And maybe I didn't save it. There we go. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. It does that right. So it's looping through the proper number of times. Pardon me? What do you mean minus the grade? Well, Well, I only want one submit button on the form, right? So that's outside of the loop. Okay. <laughs> yes, we can add a break in there. Everyone knows I hate breaks, I think. But we'll put one in there. Are you happy? Too bad, uh, what's the fellow that usually sits next to you? Isn't here? Dennis, yeah, he, he would appreciate this. See, Dennis, you missed my one time. I actually was going to put an unordered list in here, but that would cloudy up the code. All right. All right. There. Now, what do we have to do? Well, we want to replace this by the first array element and replace this by the second array element. So, what I'm going to do is go into PHP mode. Pardon me? Use magic quotes. Very good. Repeat that, please. Uh huh? Oh. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And what I can do is I can say. And then one sub i. Magic quotes, I think, get confused. No, no, we'll do it. We'll do it this way. Print. I think this will work. That's a curly bracket. And what that's going to do is we don't want to confuse our magic quotes, right? Our magic quotes are liable to think, uh, if it sees the two variables there, it's liable to think I want the value of the add end variable and then the value of the i. I don't. I want the value of add end sub i. I want, I want just one value here, right? I don't want the value of the array followed by the value of i, all right? So I use the curly brackets to indicate that that's one variable. Plus, add in two sub i equals, all right, let's go and, and test this. All 
All right. Looky there. We have our 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. There's even breaks in there so that they're not all in one line. You know what I figured? I figured better breaks than asking me to do it in a table. All right. That I, I would have had, you know, a bigger issue with. All right. So I'll, I'll gladly put your breaks in. All right. So now we're almost there, right? And we actually could quit here if we wanted to. But I'm going to do a couple of things to make my life easier. Namely, I'm going to tack on an, an, an I on the end to the answer. All right? And how am I going to do that? I'm just going to pop into PHP mode, print the I, and there and there. Now, there's other ways we can do this. We, we may talk about this. We, we definitely won't have time today. But I, I, I strictly speaking, could, st uh, could uh, skip this code. But this is the way I usually do the code. Now let's go and run this and see what we got. All right, looks the same, but if we look at the source that got generated, we see that my first answer text box is called answer zero. The second one is called answer one, two, three, and so on. And my air spans have a value of answer zero, um, answer um, one, answer, answer error zero, answer error one, answer error two. Now, I'm going to do this one better, all right? Now, we'll, we'll save that for later. We'll, we'll, we'll save that for later. All right. So, now, adding questions to the, to the quiz is easy as far as the display part goes, right? All I have to do is go in and go, whoop, Two, five, whoops. And there we go. We have another question on the quiz. Is there going to be a problem if they're uneven? Yeah, there's going to be a problem if there's uneven. So what Boy, you're going for style points here, right? Yeah, you could. Uh, the question was, is could you have an array of objects? Each object would be defined to have a, um, uh, an add-in one, an add-in two. Yeah, you could. Um, yeah, you could. That would, that would be a little bit, um, maybe even a higher level solution than this. Um, I think this is good enough. I can live with this restriction. All right. What I would do, seriously, is I put code in here that said something like if count add in one not equal to count Stupid dollar signs. Add in two. Output something like please notify Don Huffman at and give him his home phone number, you know, or your system administrator, blah, 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 blah. Uh, quiz not configured correctly, error number G7129 or something like that. All right. Or even shoot off an email to the system administrator. All right. So yeah, I can live with this restriction. All right. And really, ultimately, 
The only problem that would come in is if I had an extra one in one and not in two. That's the only time it would blow up, right? Because I'm using array one to drive the looping. So if there was one extra in array two, it's just going to ignore it. If there was one extra in array one, it would look for that extra one in array two and then it would blow up. So I can live with that if there's not a mismatch, uh, um, you know, to, or uh, to enforce that they would need to be matched. But again, your solution would be a good one as well. Um, really, what you're likely to do is populate these arrays from a database. All right. In other words, you might have predefined a set of quiz. Here's math quiz one, here's math quiz two. And it would access the database, read in the questions, and maybe make those arrays. All right. So they wouldn't be hard coded. And again, you know, other things that you could do to, to improve this. All right. So. It is 20 after, all right, or virtually 20 after. We really don't have time to start anything else. But I think you can see where this is going, all right? Where this is going is we have two more things that we need to take care of. One of them is pretty easy. The actual grading of it is pretty easy. The validation is a little dicier, but, you know, we'll work through that. So what we'll do on... Monday, I guess, is we'll work through the validation and the um, actual grading of this quiz so that all we have to do is, once we've made the change, all we have to do is keep these arrays updated and that's all we have to do to add a question and the validation, grading, everything is taken care of. If we're feeling lucky on that day, all right, we will try to put in some client-side validation as well. All right? Um, but again, you know, we'll see, how we're, we're, we'll see how we're doing that day. And we'll see how we're doing on time. Question, yes? I'm, I'm kind of confused about... Like, you're, 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 you're. Well, you can make objects in PHP just like you can make another language. So you would you'd create an object in PHP you would um, have um, some routine to uh, initialize those objects and give them the two values. Uh, and then you would, um, again, populate the array uh, instead of with the individual primitives, the numbers, you'd populate them with the object. So really, conceptually, is the same thing. It's just that uh, instead of having a list of integers here, you'd have objects and you'd create the objects and all that. Um, again, it's a good, it's an elegant solution. I'm never going to criticize creating objects, all right? But uh, I, th I think at this point, uh, you know, let's work through it this way first. All right.